Uh, my name is Jan Mikula. Uh, I work in SASIT as a product manager, uh, leading some projects. Um, so what I will be talking about today, like the, the official title is Do Not Trust Blockchains, uh, which I think is completely misleading. So I think better better title would be something like why only one blockchain makes sense and how Bitcoin started trustless revolution. And uh, I will be talking about why Bitcoin is so so unique, what, what's interesting about it. And yeah, I will also mention other, let's say, implication or what, what else uh, Bitcoin started. And uh, frankly, to, to understand Bitcoin, we will need to understand uh, how money works. So uh, I'm very sorry for uh, my economic lecturing, but I think it's really important for understanding Bitcoin. Um, so, but <laughs> I have to give you a disclaimer because <clears throat> frankly, the thoughts that I will be uh, telling you is based on economic thinking uh, by, uh, or that's based on uh, Austrian economic school, which is very minor uh, economic uh, school, uh, you know, I would say that most mainstream economists in many cases wouldn't agree with me. Uh, so uh, including many Nobel Prize winners. So uh, please, everything you hear, like uh, use your own critical thinking, I would say, uh, because yes, it's definitely not, not, not uh, mainstream. Um, I would also, um, like to warn you that i'm really let's say weird guy because um i'm not sure if the right word is nerdish or what but like uh when in 2013 our czech national bank uh started what they call intervention with the goal to uh, decrease or uh, make the exchange rate with with euro and other currencies uh, sort of like lower or like weaken our currency in order to support what they claim like uh, the, the economy. I was really against it. <laughs> I even write like open letter to Czech National Bank claiming that it's uh, unconstitution unconstitutional uh, because I think that uh, Czech National Bank doesn't have authorization from constitution to redistribute 2000 billions of Czech crowns. And because they cause uh, higher inflation, uh, and I, I think that if inflation is basically hidden taxation, uh, in Czech constitution it's clearly said that only uh, parliament has uh, the authority to, to tax people or redistribute money uh, between one group of people to another. And you can say, wow, okay, Honza, you are a really weird guy. Uh, so that's completely true. And I will tell you my reason. You know, many people would say, okay, but the intervention actually that they help the economy uh, because it, it supports, uh, uh, you know, the, the exports and we are export oriented economy. That's true, but we are also import uh, oriented economy. We export 80% of people. For example, South is, is exporting it. You know the services but like uh, on the other hand the 80 percent we need to import so uh, exporter they were gaining importers they were losing and <clears throat> you know i i i know it even as a kid because my father uh he has a factory on manufacturing furniture actually and they were exporting uh all the production to Germany. So as a kid, I was actually uh, always reading newspaper uh, at the back of the page, there was like sports section and before there was economic section. And I was al always checking the exchange rates to Deutsche Mark because I knew that if it goes up, like we will, we will be doing a little bit better. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> frankly, it's sort of, it gives you the false impression uh, and in the end, frankly, the, the company of my father, uh, they went bankrupt. I would actually, in the end, I would hope that it would uh, happen sooner because sometimes this uh, uh, long lasting pain is 
is better than uh, or is worse than like to to do it sort of quickly and you know frankly even for Celsita, right like um, obviously the exchange rate was way better for us in those four years i think we could gain based on my counting like 15 maybe 20 millions of check rounds just based on on this which is a lot of money and obviously it, it was very beneficial for us but on the other hand it sort of give us or gave us sort of this false impression that we are doing very well and maybe if we don't have this cushion maybe we would uh, do some changes sooner or maybe we would go to e-commerce sphere sooner we would have sooner the expertise there and we would be more ready on this uh, pandemic situation and now we would be king of the industry so frankly i don't in long like short term sure it helps but long term i don't think it helps and actually uh, it do more harms so you know now you, you can see that i have this weird thinking so again uh, use your own mind when when you listening to my thoughts so in order to uh, understand Bitcoin, uh, I think we need to understand money. And in, in order to understand money, I think the best way how to get, how to understand money is through understanding what is inflation. Uh, usually we think that inflation is when, you know, prices goes up, which is definitely one way how to, to spot uh, inflation. But there are also other ways how, how you can see it. Um, for example, Volumes of, of, of products is, is shrinking. I don't know, like your favorite chocolate is every year a little bit smaller. Or, you know, uh, last week I was in this restaurant picking up uh, something to eat for uh, for a lunch and they gave me the soup and there was like, you know, soup for four spoons. Like basically there is nothing and, and the volumes was really, really, let's say, low. Or, you know, the quality is going uh, down. Again, I know they 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 the 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 company that is producing the chocolate they could put there more you know junk food uh, or you know the electronics is not that great as used to be you know uh, you I when I whenever I hear from some older people talking about cars they usually say you know back then the cars was really good but now it's it's really horrible right so uh, talking about the quality so the the quality can go down because you know people or the companies are trying to save some money because the prices are going up and so on so in order to or how actually this or what is inflation like inflation is when uh, we have more and more money in the economics circulating and just few example from history how this happened so you know uh, back then centuries ago uh, when people found out uh, or they found gold uh, they very quickly start uh, minting coins from from gold and very very soon actually the kings and, and lords they they realize wow this is actually good business so they force uh, on others uh, to have like uh, their own monopoly on on minting coins and very very quickly what they start doing is that uh they put not just like pure gold but they put there some garbage or make the coins smaller and therefore they could produce more coins and that was the sort of first way how how inflation uh, you know origin um then there was some development innovation uh we had banks and because it was very impractical to actually exchange you know gold coins uh Bank said, "Hey, what about you know if you put the gold in our vault uh, in the in the basement, and we will we will give you a bank note for where it will be stated like how 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 much uh, gold you have there, and then you can exchange with others the the bank notes, and whenever they want, like they can go to our bank and pick up the gold. So you have you know bank notes like." Česká spořitelna 10 grams of gold or ČSOB uh, 100 uh, grams of gold or whatever, right? Stuff like that. Um, and then, but obviously there was a problem that uh, sometimes banks actually, they uh, 
gave people more banknotes than there was actually a gold. So, uh, you know, there was another way how the inflation uh, sort of was originated. Uh, and then the third way, uh, at some point, basically sort of century ago, the go government says, hey, you know, it's kind of impractical that all the private banks, they have their own gold in the in the world. Let's put all the gold to our world on one place and we will be uh, distributing the, the banknotes. Uh, obviously, governments, uh, they produce more banknotes uh, than uh, they had the gold. And actually, in 1971, uh, the government said, hey, you know, actually, the gold is very impractical. Let's only use the, the notes. And that's how we have the current uh, fiat monetary system. Uh, basically, we use just the paper money. And you can say, OK, you know, inflation, OK, prices are going up, but also our wages. OK, volumes are going down, not great. Quality is going also down, not great. But it has some other, um, let's say, impact. So first, um, inflation caused the, the fact that our economy uh, is uh, cyclic. So let's say six, eight, ten years, it's growing. And then there is sudden huge recession. And then it's again growing. So you know we had recession 2000 or 2001, 2008, 2009. Uh, now we have one. And it's repeating again and again, but like it's uh, it's not uh, sort of natural uh, way. It's 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 uh, it's because we are printing money. Uh, we can I could go to the details, but I, I would bore you. But like if you go if you look at the history of money and on the let's say times where we have sound money without uh, too much printing, there wasn't cycles like that, and more we brain money, uh, more cyclic our economy is. Second aspect, which uh, especially the people I think on the left maybe uh, would uh, be interested in, that actually inflation caused that um, the gap between rich and poor is, uh, is widening. Uh, frankly, if we would have some money, probably the, the gap would be slightly decreasing over time because, frankly, if you have, let's say, less money as a, as a uh, poor you know, person, you are very cautious how you spend the money. You are very effective in using. But you know, rich people, they have more money, so they are not that uh, efficient and they, are not, they don't care that much, frankly, to some degree. And that's why sort of over time, uh, the gap is usually uh, sort of decreasing. And we, uh, we, again, if you look at the history, in the period where we have uh, some money, uh, the gap was uh, sort of tightening. But from 1970, the, the gap is actually increasing. And one of the reasons is that um, if you look at how actually uh, in current system the inflation is created, it's uh, a good example is when you when you want to uh, buy a house or build a house and you go to the bank and you ask for a mortgage and okay they, they give you I don't know three millions of check rounds but actually the bank you know where they get the three millions <laughs> like sort of they don't have it they really just create it on your account they add you sort of in digital way free uh, additional millions of check rounds and that's the way how right now the money is sort of printed so when ec economists are saying about okay you know uh, central banks are printing money it they actually are talking about that central banks are allowing usually the the private banks to uh, loan more uh, or give more loans to people like mortgages and so on. And this is the way how the, the money is uh, created. And so what happened next? Okay, you have the mortgage, you buy a house. From who? So usually it's somebody, I guess, richer who already owned the house. So this rich person uh, get, you know, three millions. What they do, um, they invest in stock markets usually or something like that. So stocks uh, are going up. So again, what you can see, uh, I'm simplifying it, but like when central banks uh, or, or governments are saying, okay, we will do this stimulus, we will print more money. 
immediately the the stock market uh, goes up. Uh, so even though, for example, that uh, we are in this huge recession because of COVID, like the stock market is super up, and uh, this is the reason. And that's and frankly, that's the reason why rich are richer because you know the the sort of the new money is flow floating to to things that uh, that are owned by rich people. But for the poor people, uh, what we can see, okay, you know, the breads and, and the normal products, the prices are going up. But you know, poor people are not owning uh, <clears throat> those uh, valuable assets like stocks and so on. So they only see the the prices are going up, and that's the reason why we see the uh, gap between rich and poor uh, widening. So uh, in order to as I said, understand Bitcoin, we, we really need to understand what is money. We a little bit talk about the inflation and how sort of the inflation kind of destroys the money. Uh, but let's really understand what, what is money. So I think the best way how to understand it is to distinguish what is wealth and what is money. So for me, wealth is, you know, people's skills that I don't like. We as a programmers, we are able to to program you know application that is really fancy and, and people are using it. Or uh, that you are good cra craftsman that uh, that can produce I don't know, nice 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 stuff or construct a house. Uh, talking about constructing house, you know, for that you need uh, you know bricks, you need uh, nails, you need some you know wood and some other materials, and all those sort of physical objects are, I think, well, because uh, in the end, you, you, when you, I don't know, if you need, uh, as, a, as a human being, you, you need shelter, you need, uh, you need, you need to eat, right? And and you need to sort of use those physical objects to, uh, to accomplish those things, like money, the paper money itself, like uh, you cannot eat those, right? So. What is money? I think the good way how to understand money is actually imagine uh, economy without without money. So um, let's say that somehow miraculously the, the exchanges are happening. And again, let's let's uh, use the example. Uh, you want to build a house, right? So you go to the to the bank and uh, you would like a mortgage, but there is no money. Imagine that. So bank instead of money, they will give you, you know, the bricks, the the, the people that will construct that, uh, all the materials and so on, right? If you think about it, then then you realize that if many people will ask for a mortgage and they will get the bricks and and the people that will construct it, uh, we need to have those bricks and we need to have those people that will construct that, right? So. Uh, and more people will ask for uh, constructing homes. The mo like the we need more of those people that are able to construct it, and we need more uh, bricks so we can actually build uh, the house. Another good example to to really understand how money works is like current example, right? Like you have half of the shops are closed, uh, many factories are kind of closed, um, uh, restaurants are closed and government are giving them uh, a money right okay so as a compensation which i guess makes sense but like how it would work in the in the economy um in the normal economy right like it would work in a way that uh i don't know like we would need to send them i don't know the the breads and and, and toothpaste and other things that they use right because there is no money and we, we will send them directly the stuff they need right which means that somebody needs to produce it, right? So um, what I'm trying to say is uh, money on its own, it's, it's a nice thing, but they don't have on its own any value unless you can buy with them some real thing. So for me, uh, the money, the, the best uh, uh, way how to think about it is, is a key, right? So let's say that your neighbor has a car and you really like it right so you decide okay I, I will go to the bank because i want that i want the same car as as my uh as my neighbor because i have a new girlfriend and i want to ride her to some nice nice fancy dinner and you know i want to show off whatever so i go to the bank and the, and the banker says sure uh here is the key uh 
And actually, we already sort of bought for, for you the car and you are parking uh, near our house when uh, basically in front of your uh, neighbor's house. OK, so you have the key from the car and because you are using it uh, just in the evening, uh, the car is there and you open the car, you drive your girlfriend for, for, to, the to the restaurant, you have nice dinner, great. Um, but then you realize that, for example, the bank give the key to somebody else as well. And you suddenly realize you uh, that somebody else, your neighbor, that actually the bank just gave uh, the key to the single car of your neighbor. And suddenly it's not like that three of you have three cars, but like you have just one single car and it's not like that you, you can use it the same time, right? So. Basically, the bank creates sort of a fake news in the economy and, and suddenly uh, people are realizing that there is not enough of those real things as banks and doesn't matter if it's central banks or private banks are claiming. So, and frankly, uh, if you studied more, like that's the moment where actually the economy is going to the recession because suddenly uh, entrepreneurs, people are realizing there is not enough things that we thought and you know prices are you know everything is more expensive that uh, that we thought the project that we were building doesn't make sudden sense because it was uh, built on false information and that's when recession come and so start sort of cleaning stuff up uh, i would uh, for me recession is some something like sort of refactoring that basically we are you know the economy is cleaner cleaning the, the mess that we did by creating those uh, false information. Um, so, okay, so finally, we can go to Bitcoin and what is really Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is actually an attempt to, to fix all those issues that I uh, so far described. Um, but the interesting thing about Bitcoin is how they are trying to solve, because there was many, many attempts in history to, to fix this. But uh, usually they fail for two reasons. For example, um, some governments claim, oh, we will have, you know, we will print a very low amount of money. We will be, we will try to protect sound money in the economy. But frankly, the incentives in the end are that strong that uh, at some point they they give up and start printing more because it's it, it suits them. Then there's uh, another example that where, for example, some uh, private uh, private people uh, try some initiatives, for example, use some create some private money. But the problem was that it was usually sort of one institution that was very easy to to shut down by government and, and send people to jail. Uh, for example, e-gold initiative in the US. And uh, so there was this uh, single uh, point of failure and, and that uh, prevents it. So, Bitcoin decided that they will do it a little bit differently. Okay, so, you know, central banks are printing money as they want. So how about that we do it in a way that, yes, anybody can create uh, their own money, uh, but let's put there one condition, if others uh, in the network will agree with it. So there is sort of this like democratic system where, okay, anybody can sort of pitch in and, and be uh, the, let's say, central bank or the printer of the money or the miner of the, let's say, the digital gold. Uh, but all the others uh, are watching you and you should behave uh, in a way how we all agreed. Uh, otherwise, we will sort of uh, prevent you from you know, being part of the network. So that was the actually a uh, brilliant solution. Uh, that's uh, uh, that's the solution of this problem, that it's not like, okay, we will have this one central smart uh, institution that will create the money for us, but we actually will let anybody uh, to, uh, to be part of it. Uh, there is second aspect, let's say, of, of the money. It's not about just about the creation, but you want to use it for your exchanges. And there is another problem. So let's say that you, you mined your Bitcoin and you, you are a shady person or uh, yeah, you are a shady person. 
and you want to you know buy coca-cola for bitcoin in one shop and in the other restaurant for the very same bitcoin you want to buy a pizza obviously that would be uh, what we call double spending that you use the bitcoin for two transactions which obviously would if anybody can do it uh you know it would be the same as printing new money because you, you can create or you can do uh whatever uh transaction you want and that would uh not make any sense so the solution for that is there is uh what we call public ledger is basically a list of all the transactions way where the the people that are kind of like printing the money the miners what we call are basically validating if you use your Bitcoin only once and uh, no more. So, and for that, uh, that they are validating, there is no those like double spends, uh, they get the reward, which is actually the mining. So uh, that's uh, kind of interesting system that uh, you are rewarded for keeping the, the whole network and the money sound as as possible the good thing that the ledger because it's public uh you can anybody uh, in the network can again sort of download the ledger uh, and and check it and control it uh, on their own so is there is like uh, another uh let's say security uh security tool how to make sure that the the the, the system is is working um so now a little bit talk about the technology and i will not go um, into more details but um, i try to uh, explain you the inflation and the reason is because the inflation what, what it destroys is what we call preciousness of 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 money and preciousness is i think the the most important let's say aspect of money and the whole system that i just described is a way how to uh, let's say empower or secure that we will have as precious Bitcoin as possible. And uh, so what, what means preciousness? That it means that there is, uh, in terms of Bitcoin, infinite or not like finite number of, of Bitcoins. Actually, there is 21 million uh, that will be uh, mined. That's the agreement basically uh, in the whole network. And uh, that sort of rule uh, creates uh, the, the the notion that, okay, you know, there's only 21 million Bitcoin in the end. So that's why it this money will be really precious. There is no way how, you know, anybody can sort of print more and, and destroy the, the preciousness, which is again, the most important aspect of, of money. So how Bitcoin works. Um, Actually, it works that every four years, uh, the rewards for, for the miners uh, is uh, cut in half. Uh, and that way, they will print less and less money every four years. Uh, so, for example, like the first, uh, what we call halving, uh, that's the moment where the rewards uh, are uh, halved, uh, happened in 2012. So till 2012, uh, there was mined 10, around 10 millions of Bitcoins. In 2016, in the next halving till, so from 2012 to 2016, uh, there was another half was mined. So around like 5 million. The last halving happened last year in uh, 2020, uh, 20, uh, and again, between 2016 and 2020. There was only sort of two and a half million or something like that uh, uh, bitcoins were were mined, and and this will uh, continue. Why this is imp uh, important? Because basically every four year, relatively, we are making bitcoin more precious and more precious, and we can see it on the price. So the the highest price that we saw uh, till 2012 was ten dollars. Between 2012 and 2016, it was uh, $1,200. Uh, uh, in the next four years, uh, the highest price that we saw was uh, $20,000. And even though we are in the beginning, uh, in the next cycle, 
uh, we already saw uh, the price for $42,000. Uh, so, you know, but you, you, you can still think, okay, this, this is weird. It's, you know, Bitcoin, somebody is creating some weird hashes, tokens, whatever. And why, why, why it has any value? Like there's nothing behind it, right? So I will try to explain you why like, this notion of preciousness is actually the most important one. Um, and I think good way how to look at it is through, let's say, evolutionary uh, perspective. So look at, you know, how gold started, right? Like somebody way back then find this glowing yellow rock and suddenly because it was unique piece, it was really interesting to people suddenly you know like other people in, in the in the in the group or in the society say wow well, this you know that this is interesting this guy is i guess very smart because he was able to acquire this you know magical piece of rock and uh, you know the other people in the so society uh, that you know wanted to be also like famous like this this person they were willing to for example trade for that piece of uh, rock uh, for that glowing piece of rock uh, i don't know that the meat that they were able to to hound or or the bread that they were able to bake and suddenly this piece of gold uh, or piece of rock uh, started to have some some kind of value yes it was very speculative value it was really changing and it was nothing stable but funny thing is that you know over time this piece of a yellow glowing rock was still very valuable and people start noticing that okay you know it was valuable 20 years ago it's valuable now uh, then you know it was even over addition like still this and gave people some kind of status in the society so what people uh, start doing, they wanted uh, to to acquire this at least piece of that uh, piece of that gold, because uh, it was able to preserve value over time, which is very useful. Because uh, okay, it's it's great when you are young and you can hunt everything, you know, every animal you can bake any bread because you have all the energy. But um, in the past um sorry somebody is mentioning something oh sorry um but somebody um you know when you are getting older you know you have less energy and it's actually good when from the, to to preserve some values from the younger years so you can trade even when you are older and you have still you know good amount of food that you can eat and so on right so it's very it's very natural for human to try to store the value so people are looking what can store their value especially for those uh, bad times or you know when you are for example older so and yes it seems that this weird yellow glowing piece of rock is working so suddenly everybody is trying to acquire at least piece of it right the prices goes up and as price goes up actually the store of value is working more and more so it's even more popular there's kind of a like network effect and uh, suddenly sort of all the society is using it as a store of value and since many people uh, got really rich uh, on this piece of rock they start to exchange it for the day-to-day -day things or you know because they are older and they are not able to hunt themselves they will start start trading this piece of uh rock for you know the day-to-day -day, uh you know food or or products that they need and suddenly this piece of rock is used as a medium of exchange and since uh, another level is when you know almost every transaction in the society is happening through this it suddenly happens like unit of account so this is sort of evolution of money uh but you can you have maybe more let's say modern or more um, how to say it more crazy example how this could happen like uh for example let's 
let's uh, take example of some online game like you know world of warcraft right like there, could, there are some objects that are very precious because there are only five of them some some weird or by the way i never played world of warcraft so maybe i'm i'm saying some um, some bullshit but there could be some very fancy object that only five people uh, have and you know if you have it you are in that game very interesting very unique and you have you know huge status there and obviously other other uh, gamers they want to have it and if they have some money they they will buy it from you and um so actually even this digital uh, thing that is not real object suddenly has a man, uh, has a value obviously the problem is that uh, theoretically uh, if there if there is a guarantee that there will be, there will be only five of those words uh, okay maybe you can use it in time as a store of value but sure like you know the, the gaming studio if they would see that the 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 source are so you know expensive and so valuable they would create for themselves few of them and and get richer right so uh that's the problem why you know swords from world of warcraft will not became a store of value and and money but you know bitcoin is a little bit different like um sure in the beginning so what is different like actually the whole point of the bitcoin is that the whole feature or how it's designed is about securing the preciousness of those tokens the same uh so uh you know in the beginning okay you know some nerds were playing with it and and they were mining the bitcoin and and there was some very little value but over time it uh, it it gets some kind of speculative value and it was growing every four years it's it's like 10 to 100 times uh uh more valuable so you know it's already i think like 12 years so it's not like like that we would have it for one year so it actually went through the proof of time at least to some degree and it's now becoming a store of value we see even some bigger companies investing in uh, in bitcoin because yeah they see it as a store of value and frankly, money are valuable when other uh, people think that they will be valuable. So uh, to some degree, it's like this psychologic game. Um, but I try to show you that, you know, because Bitcoin is designed in a way that it's protecting the, the preciousness, uh, it has the best, um, best, let's say, characteristic to win this game. Maybe another way how to look at Bitcoin is, as I said, like it's very natural for human beings to somehow store, uh, store the value of the world that we produce, right? Currently, um, if, if you talk to some uh, financial advisor, they will tell, oh, you know, put your free resources to, you know, some portion to stocks or, you know, share, basically shares of, of some companies, real estates, uh, buy some government bonds, some to gold and silver. Uh, so let's look at those assets, uh, you know, financial assets that are used today. So, you know, government bonds right now, uh, first of all, like you have usually around zero interest or sometimes a bit higher, but there is, it usually doesn't even cover the, the inflation or like the, the, uh, the price growing uh, or increasing. Uh, and also it's very risky, like, you know, the, the, the government has huge debt and uh, you, you kind of speculate that they will manage to handle it over, you know, tens of years. Because, if, for example, if you are doing it for your uh, retirement and it will happen in, I don't know, 30 years, you you are saying, okay, I trust the government that they will not go bankrupt uh, next 30, 40 years, right? Which is how you can sort of foresee the future. It's, it's uh, really, um, you know, hard to do. Then real estates, like frankly, you know, building houses, I think building houses was meant for people to live in them. And, you know, if some, for example, uh, richer people are, you know, owning 
many real estates. You know, Donald Trump has, uh, you know, resorts there and here, and, and and you know, in every larger city, he can go and and be there. You know, it's not like that. Uh, he wants to live everywhere. It's really that he tries to store the value there. Uh, but obviously, it um, first of all, um, you know, real estates were again were not meant for storing the value. It was meant for people living in the uh, in there. And second of all, it also like increased the the problem with the housing crisis that there's not not enough places for for sort of ordinary people because it the prices are going up. Why is it going up? Because people are using it as a store of value. Uh, the last thing you know, you should invest in in shares in in, in companies. Uh, well, like. Yes, but like originally it was meant that I know that you trust this company because they have like this innovative uh, idea and uh, you are sort of betting that uh, they will make some money and uh, through dividends you will get your investment back. But that's no longer happening. Uh, it's more like you are speculating that the, the, the stock price will be even higher in let's say five, 10 years. The trouble with that is like generally the, the stock market is going up, but like let's say the average or life expectancy of, of average company is around, I think, 10 years or something, and it's actually getting lower. So uh, you might, and again, and you are looking for sort of 30 to 40 years uh, ahead, and you need to say, okay, so this company will be successful in 30, 40 years. Sure, like you can sort of change your portfolio over time. But that's even make it riskier because you need to constantly evaluating you know, what companies are doing well, what are not. Sure, you can use this, use some indexes and so on, but um, sure that, that will probably a little bit help with the risk. Uh, but still, again, like the shares in the companies were not meant as a as, like as a store of value, right? So, and again, Bitcoin is was actually designed to be store of value. So uh, that's why I think it will actually exceed all those assets that are used uh, today. Bitcoin versus other cryptocurrencies or tokens. Um, yeah, that's basically the explanation why uh, I think that only one blockchain makes sense. Uh, you know, it doesn't make sense to have zillions of currencies because, you know, they would not be pressured if each of us can create our own cryptocurrency, our own token, like, okay, but that's that's completely missing the point, right? So why I think actually Bitcoin uh, will uh, overcome uh, or beat all those other, like first there is this Linda effect, like, it's the oldest cryptocurrency there is most of the people so there is the highest probability that actually bitcoin will win uh in this uh, sort of market or uh in in uh, cryptocurrencies also there is net for effect like actually more people are using bitcoin the more bitcoin is precious and because as we said like the preciousness is the most important characteristic it will attract even more people and then uh, it will again sort of increase even more uh, the, the network effect and it will attract even more people. So um, that's another reason why I think Bitcoin will win it in the end. Um, frankly, like Bitcoin has very simple kind of and secure architecture and all the other sort of experimenting is happening outside on the second layer so it's really they are focusing on just one thing the preciousness the other cryptocurrencies usually if it's not really a scam or something they are trying to do different things they are way more complicated um so that's why i think like 99 percent is I call it bullshit but uh you know i don't think they have uh, a future on the other hand it might sound weird, but I actually support that, that there are lots of uh, uh, alternative uh, cryptocurrencies because I think they they are acting as a experimenting, exp like as a laboratory for experiments and uh, each failure of the alternative currency 
is actually giving us some 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 takeaways, some uh, some learnings that uh, can be used to improve Bitcoin and make Bitcoin even even stronger. So uh, definitely, I'm not against other alternatives, but in the end, I think Bitcoin will win. Also, there there was maybe to some degree still is this trend that like everything should be on blockchain because that's the new technology. Uh, so I'm making fun that even garden mower will be on, on blockchain. It, it's bullshit, obviously, because um, the blockchain on Bitcoin is very slow. It's very expensive, um, which there it makes sense because you it's about everything is about securing the, the, the preciousness. Uh, but for all the other use cases, it, it simply doesn't make sense. And also, like I try to briefly describe like how nicely the incentives in the system are aligned. So people are really cooperating. But in many of those blockchain solutions, it's, there are no incentives or those incentives doesn't make sense. Also, the, the UX sort of, of the whole solution doesn't make sense. I remember like uh, when Saseta, we were you know, talking to some companies about helping us with branding. And I remember uh, one, one company and, and they were describing some project and say, oh, it's on blockchain because you know, that there's this, uh, uh, this rich guy has some you know, uh, fancy historic cars and we're doing this application that is AR, VR and it's on blockchain. And it's like, why it's on blockchain? Like why is normal database should be on blockchain, right? So, and, and there are many, so this was extreme example of bullshitting, but there are many, many examples uh, of that. Also like there are some ideas, uh, for example, let's say in Africa that they have problem with the corrupted government and they are saying, okay, let's run sort of the, the, the database of properties on a blockchain, so you know, so um, shady uh, bureaucrats cannot uh, store your uh, your property. Sure, it could be maybe a good idea, uh, but the problem is that you know it could be written on blockchain that this property is yours. But like, if in the real world, you know, there is mafia, terrorists, or some other criminals, and they will go on your property and say, you know, get out. You can have whatever you want uh, written in blockchain, but still it uh, will not work. And this is known as like Oracle problem, like how to sort of uh, match what's happening in the real world with what's uh, on blockchain. And I think usually it simply doesn't make sense. So I don't think blockchain is answer for every every problem. That said, um, I definitely think there is happening that Bitcoin started uh, trustless revolution, what I would call, that is basically using technologies that are decentralized uh, to to solve some like real issues. Like, you know, many many people in uh, in society have uh, in some countries with undemocratic regime, they have like problem with with censorship. Uh, we obviously have problems with uh, protecting privacy uh, online. Uh, we have problem with, for example, fake news. You know. Uh, how do you know that this picture is real or not? Uh, you know, uh, problems like how to identify people securely uh, online. Uh, and of course, we discuss and many others, and also we discuss the financial sort of wealth sovereignty, which uh, is solved by Bitcoin. And there are many initiatives around that. So, for example, Blue Sky by Twitter, they're trying to create some protocol for sort of decentralized social media. Microsoft is exploring uh, decentralized identi uh, identity management. Uh, there is the startup uh, P that is uh, basically doing that. For example, journalists can uh, sort of uh, write, let's say, uh, or have a note, let's say, on blockchain about some picture they did, and then the readers can can verify that what they are looking at is really this uh, this original picture, and it's not any modification. Uh, and so you have like sort of history and and prove that this is really a, a valid use case, which could help with fake news and other stuff. You know, we obviously you know companies like Google and Facebook they have troubles with 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 privacy, uh, but frankly, I don't think that uh, they are happy that they they are sort of uh, trying to have all the information 
they are doing just because uh, they want to earn as much money on 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 ads and for that they need the information right so uh, the brave browser they are trying different concepts so they want also to provide sort of personalized ads uh, but they are not sending the private information anywhere and sort of this the let's say the algorithms that is choosing the the personalized ads is running locally uh, and there are many many other aspects or many other initiatives and projects which use you know principles like open source uh even there is initiative like open hardware that you have like uh, sort of open source hardware specification so you know what's in those devices right like uh, there's now problems with some devices from China. Somebody's questioning, oh, maybe they, they are somehow sort of screwed. So it's sending information somewhere, whatever, right? Like, so this is, for example, solution for that. Obviously, cryptography, they use, you know, game theory. They, they use understanding of complex system. And I would say, I, I don't know what is the best term. I call it sort of asymmetric globalization that empower uh, individualism. So uh basically what what's what they are trying to use is that huge crowds are sort of protecting um uh individual rights so in 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 blockchain it's done that, that anybody can uh, sort of help with securing the the network so each individual have like sort of their own secured bitcoin right so that's this uh interesting like approach how to secure stuff through like huge crowd, but that really supports like each individual. So some takeaways. <clears throat> I heard somewhere that you know it's it's now very uh, intelligent, let's say, or smart to invest one percent of your free resources to Bitcoin. I don't have problem with this recommendation, but I think even uh, more important recommendation is really study Bitcoin because, as I said. You know, I have definitely biased view, and uh, you should examine yourself. Uh, and I think it's worth it uh, because it's not just about the money; it's also about all those technologies that are now sort of uh, originating from from the Bitcoin uh, ecosystem or the crypto uh, uh, ecosystem. I also think that the whole industry is. Uh, there are also opportunities. So just, just one one number, right? Like the market capitalization of uh, Bitcoin was in March around 100 billions of dollars. Uh, right now it's around 700 billions, uh, which is huge, um, let's say, uh, increase. And bear in mind or keep in mind that, you know, lots of people that started back then with, with uh, Bitcoin are now very rich, but those people, you know, they really like Bitcoin and they want to invest in the ecosystem. So they are actually investing uh, and they are starting many projects and, and so on. Uh, also, I see sort of like new level of development. Um, many people are calling Web 3.0. So, you know, Web 2.0 was basically a single, uh, single page application. And the Web 3.0 is basically using all those like trustless technologies for, for next level, uh, let's say, or next generation of, of application. Uh, I think in e-commerce, there will be many, for example, shops uh, that will start accepting crypto and Bit uh, Bitcoin, especially. Uh, there's hiring surge between those trustless startup because they need smart people. Obviously, it's it's. Uh, uh, you need really smart people to understand not just the the crypt, uh, like the cryptography and, and, and the programming, but uh, all the aspects around. And frankly, because the whole industry was started with, uh, let's say, cryptographic nerds, I would say, uh, I feel there is huge UX depth. Uh, so still for like ordinary people, even Bitcoin is sort of hard to use. So I think... Um, that we will see in, in coming years, uh, lots of development around it to make it uh, everything uh, in the industry more uh, user-friendly. And yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So thanks. And um, I guess let's go to the questions. Alfred, will you present or should, should I present? Okay. You should say it now. Uh, 
Uh, from Matt, how do you react to the fact that governments have been plowing massive stimulus into various economies since 2008 crisis, yet inflation is st still very low? Uh, yeah, as I said, that was the first, like, you know, it's not about just pricing uh, going up, this first thing. Uh, also, it also depends how, how you measure it. Obviously, if, if you include, for example, stock markets, like uh, the, <laughs> the inflation is, uh, is very higher. Um, and yes, like um, current, for example, that's why I sort of uh, put there the disclaimer. Uh, if you ask me like six years ago, I would say, well, you know, the, the financial or the whole economic, probably there will be huge recession and it didn't happen. And probably it, it's possible that for, for many more years, it, uh, it will work and, and sort of it will happen undercover. But I, I don't think it can, um, it can uh, have sort of work forever this way. And at some point, like the, the financial or the financial system is working now will, will sort of collapse and hopefully it will collapse in, uh, let's say, graceful way. And we will, uh, in the meantime, create alternatives. But like, yeah, there's huge debts and a huge printing just this year. Uh, they basically, uh, US economy has 20% of more, you know, like, printing money there which is enormous because you know for example 100 years ago it would take let's say i don't know 40 five, 50 years to to do this and we we did it in just a few months so it's uh, i don't think it's sustainable uh cryptocurrency boss how much btc do you have so okay there's one rule that you will never tell so uh i will tell you i have either zero or very little and uh i think um uh, that sort of Let's say ethical codex that nobody should tell or ask each other like how much uh, bitcoin you have so next one poor guy what do you recommend to invest in uh, as i try to say uh i would basically say sorry if you have some free research like definitely don't buy bitcoin by taking a mortgage or by you know, selling all your stuff. I would say, um, if you have some, let's say, don't go to the pub uh, once in a while and and use those few few hundreds and invest uh, in Bitcoin. I think uh, it's actually a good strategy. Um, um, so yeah, I, I definitely think that Bitcoin is good investment and definitely don't put there everything, just small uh, amounts. Uh, let's say the one percent, and uh, yeah, that's what I would recommend. What about other cryptocurrencies hold goal is not to be store of value. Ethereum aims to facilitate programmatic contracts. Um, yeah, I agree. Um, my problem with those things is that um, as a UX guy, I always find, okay, so what is the use case? And like, again, in let's say 99%, I, I feel that the use case is not there. So I support Ethereum. Although I feel that it's it's very risky project, uh, they are now doing like this big move to Ethereum uh, 2.0. Let's see how how this will work out. Um, but frankly, like, lots of those contracts, I'm, I'm not sure about it. Uh, so that's why I I rather start basically with sort of what, okay as a society as a single person like what problems are we having and then let's find out the the right solution and sometimes it could be blockchain sometimes it could be some kind of trustless technologies but it doesn't mean that it's all the time so that's why i'm i'm skeptical but again like uh, i'm saying 99 percent maybe are bullshit but the one percent can really change the world so uh, I'm definitely supporting all this experimentation. Uh, I, I would be just very cautious about uh, um, you know, those things. Ilde, I thought Bitcoin, Bitcoin was a scam. Um, yeah, probably, probably it's a scam. Um, like many people will uh, have this opinion for sure. Um, and uh so that's why i'm saying like use your own mind uh definitely don't blindly listen what i'm saying because yeah i think it's good idea to learn about bitcoin then do your own decision if you think it's scam or it's just experiment or if it's really mature enough and i should put more money into it uh it, 
you know, uh, it's really up to you, but like do your homework and, and study it, I would say. Uh, another point, uh, do you really think Bitcoin will become money or will it remain speculative commodity? The US government keeps it um, keeps it a commodity through administrative action. I would say this way, definitely I'm not sure if it will become a money, definitely there will be lots of pushbacks against it from government, obviously, uh, especially US government has lots of incentives to do it because now US uh is uh, global reserve currency which basically gives sort of subsidy to us uh, economy for free uh and they will uh they will lose it if if uh, for example bitcoin uh, replace uh, us uh, us uh, us dollar uh but i don't know so i, I think bitcoin has all the good properties and and it looks really promising but only time will tell if it if 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 it will be true or not. Uh, I hope it will. Um, I will. I am betting some of my free resources to it, uh, but definitely it's not certain. But Bitcoin is not being capable to handle all trucks, all transaction of all people on its blockchain. Mm, yeah, uh, because the the first layer, the primary level, is for. Uh, being a store of value which uh, as i try to show is uh important let's say prerequisite to be uh, the medium of exchange and for the medium of exchange uh, therefore for handling all the transactions uh now the community is building the second layer like you know liquid and, and lightning network and frankly e even if we are not able to build it and we will have it as store of value i think it will be perfectly fine and 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 uh, the and you know the bitcoin will do uh, or will make a difference so theoretically there could be an option that we will use bitcoin really just as a store of value and the medium uh, or the transaction we will still do through for example uh, us dollar or other uh, fiat currencies and uh, i think still it would be better than than the current system next one when do you think BTC will be used for standard payments if now transaction costs is super high uh, value of BTC is super volatile transaction are slow uh, as I said like mm, maybe it will not never happen I will still be fine with that I frankly think it will happen and it will happen once the the second layer uh, uh, will uh, be sort of uh, functional uh, there's some let's say experimentation right now but you know, it's still like there is an example that a uh, few hundred years ago, when China's government introduced the new money, it took them 100 years to to make it a money that is used in the country. And so, you know, the money is very, let's say, conservative too. So it takes years, and we still are like just 12 years in uh, in working on on Bitcoin. So maybe it will happen in 10, 15 years. Uh, that that's that's uh, that's possible uh, but definitely there is lots of development and with uh, the price going up there is more and more resources actually that can be uh, used for building this ecosystem around it so um, i don't have exact timeline but i think in the end it will actually happen what about missing anonymity and fungibility of bitcoin compared to cash um yeah it depends like uh cash is good uh also there are some cryptocurrencies that are handling the anonymity and privacy like like monero which uh, actually could be maybe monero will be sort of good uh, uh viable uh cryptocurrency that will uh live uh, along with bitcoin or maybe once bitcoin um sort of the second layer is developed and uh, maybe there will be some uh, some solution that will give you anonymity again i think we are still in very beginning and uh i'm not the right person to judge because i i know very little about the technology but based on sort of uh seeing what's happening in the industry like many people definitely are interested in this and are interested in solving it some somewhere in the Bitcoin ecosystem. So I think eventually it will happen. I'm not sure if one in one year, in 10 years, but I think eventually it will happen. 
where to buy Bitcoin recommended best way. Uh, frankly, I'm, I'm not the, the best person. I, I'm not sure. I buy, uh, as I said, I don't have any Bitcoin, so uh, it's hard to tell, but maybe I would recommend to you, I think on, on Slack, we have this Bitcoin channel and uh, many people can uh, advise you and there's many videos. Uh, so definitely I would maybe recommend to not I don't know, like there, there's actually it's very tricky discussion because you can do it some, on some official uh, uh, um, exchanges, but uh, you will lose your privacy. You can do it sort of outside of the system, but then maybe the, the government will have more incentives to uh, go after you and so on. So um, there are also like some things to consider. So probably it, it requires more discussion. So I, I would say let's do, do that discussion in Bitcoin channel. How to secure keys to BTC one half? Uh, one actually uh, think that uh, there are solutions, but I still think that they are far from really UX friendly. So I think that's something that will improve a lot. Uh, but definitely I would, um, recommend to you some hybrid wallet like like trezor uh, which is from the czech uh, czech company and i think it works uh, pretty well uh, but yeah it's um, it's really tricky question in the end because um but i don't want to sort of prolong the discussion i would say again let, let's discuss it in, in bitcoin channel because um, there are more uh, things to consider when you are secu securing keys to your uh, bitcoin All right, thank you very much.